Hey, what's going on? John Denicola. Or Denicola, that's how you pronounce it. It's going down, everyone. We are here in the village of Menans. What's going on, Joko KS Cop Watch? Figured I'd wait a moment. Let some uh some more people come in. Hey Sasquatch, hey, hey. So I came over here, for those who are here now, came over to the village of Menans Police Department. Uh, working on a story about Menans detective indicted on felonies in Attorney General Queeman's case. This happened in 22, or at least this particular article that I will be reading from, or at least bits and pieces from. So before I do that though, Hey, Alvaro Lopez, Alvaro. So, uh, I have my other camera and I was exercising my freedom of speech with my God bless the homeless sign. And the detective that I was actually hoping to see because of the story that I have for you, the same detective who was indicted, okay, uh, he came out. His name is Kevin... Schwebski? Schweb Schwebki, excuse me. I think it's a German last name. So, ooh, that shit was loud. So he used to be a detective, okay? But he was promoted, okay? I had a whole conversation with him, okay? I've been out here for at least over an hour uh, filming with my other, other camera on the low, pretty much. So he came out being nosy, trying to read. He literally was trying to read what the sign said, okay? For whatever reason, who knows? But then when I noticed who it was, I started having a conversation with him about the allegations, okay? I was, tr I was hoping I would find uh, the conclusion, the outcome of the investigation, but I wasn't able to, okay? So feel free to look it up and maybe you can dig deeper, better than me. But I wasn't able to find anything when it comes to the outcome of this, uh, of the allegations, of the indictment. He told me that he was not guilty, okay? But he can say whatever he want, right? He can say whatever he want. But uh, he was, him and other officers that were involved, okay? Because four officers had to be retrained. Uh, and they're from Queeman's Police Department. So now that I got a few people here, I'm gonna walk around first. Trying to, I'm gonna try to tell you the story or the allegations from what I can remember, okay? Because I'm, you know, I'm walking around with my tripod. So when I'm done, hold up a second. So we're gonna check out the perimeter real quick. And then I'm gonna show you the sign. But, uh, I just had the whole conversation with this guy. So you got Menans police right there. So we're gonna see, there's the fire department. Cause it's all in one. You got the village, uh, the village police department. Apparently the fire department. All right, so here's their side. We're just gonna do a, a whole circle, pretty much, or square, because technically the building is more like a square slash rectangle. What's going on? Let me see, let me go to the comments real quick. Wicked Wimley, no doubt. Everything's good. We're at the Menans Police Department. Here's the fire department inside. But uh, someone had sent me an email about the village of Menans Police Department having a sign saying that you can't record. It says something about camera equipment, video equipment, and stuff like that. So we're checking it out and we're gonna go in. 
I already, I already went inside when I was uh, exercising my freedom of speech with my sign, God bless the homeless. I went inside to see if, uh, if I can use the bathroom. They don't have any public restrooms or anything. So we're gonna give you some angles of the police vehicles. Some parking spots, check out how the building looks as well. See the way it's set up. Give you a front angle. Yeah, it looks good. Go to the other side. I got the tripod so I can't really put the camera to the glass. So you're going to see some glare. And it's nice out. All right, so that's pretty much it for the outside view. So I'm going to give you some more angles and then we're going to go inside. And I'm going to read or continue to read. If I even started reading. But while I've, I've been here, uh, I've heard some something racial for sure while i was while i've been here someone tried to park right here to i didn't say i can't say try they literally parked in a handicapped spot okay i took a picture of it and stuff like that so they parked in the handicapped spot and when they came out i'm like yo you're just gonna park because i make sure that they didn't have no stickers and stuff like that you know handicap sticker he's like yo i just gotta go inside i'm like nah man I'm like like you should be ashamed of yourself it's so, oh but i only gotta i'm like man there's a, a he's like there's no parking and stuff and the car was just leaving i'm like there's a, a spot right there but i'm going to show you the the signs real quick they got a memorial here let me show you the paper so you don't think i'm stunting so here's the paper lieutenant this is his number okay he's a lieutenant now evan Sweb swebke Swebke, Swebke, there you go, Swebke. It's a German last name, I think. So we're gonna go check out the honor roll. Feel free to pause that. I am doing this for two different reasons, okay? Because we have a right to, that's the, the most important one. Because of this sign right here. Okay, so this is why we're doing it right here. All use of camera or video equipment is prohibited in this village of Minan's facility, except village owned public safety and security cameras. So we are going into the lobby, which we have a right because in New York state, we have the New Yorkers right to monitor act. Okay, and that allows us to be able to record them in, uh, in public naturally. You know what I mean? Without being uh scared of getting your camera taken away from you just because you're recording them and stuff like that so we also have a right to do it in the police stations okay the at least the lobby because sometimes they're connected as you can tell the Minan's police is connected with the village court so they have to establish what is the lobby and stuff like that they can't just mark everything off when we have a right to exercise our rights in certain areas okay so that's the reason why we're here plus we have the story that i'm going to be telling you guys about i right, not at the moment i'm just looking around in the police lobby are you sure about that? What statue? Can I see the statue to that, please? Because I was speaking to the guy. Court offices are on the second floor. As you can tell, I'm only in the lobby, okay? Like I said, the New Yorkers' Right to Monitor Act, Section 79P, to be exact, allows us to be able to film them, okay? Not just in the public, but at the police station. See, they got a whole bunch of public information here. So 
So I figured I'd come in. I'm gonna set up right here out of the way real quick so I can read you the article. Set up my tripods, give me a moment. I apologize for the angles. All right, that should be good. All right, so we're just in the police lobby. You see they got uh, cameras too. So I'm gonna chill here for a moment. She closed the curtain and stuff. Good afternoon, everybody. Now I have a moment to uh, give some shout outs to the people that just came. Nancy Gorman, Cam Up Caveman. She'll slip your punches. Hey, hey, what's going on? Modern Retro Radio. Good afternoon. Is it afternoon? Yeah, it is. <coughs> Danny's thoughts. I was thinking, good afternoon. All right, so I'm here at the village of Menance, and I just spoke to uh, Lieutenant. He used to be a detective, but he's Lieutenant now. Lieutenant Kevin Schwebke, all right? And it says, it's all allegations. Let's go, News Now Ninja Gonzo, let's go. But the complaint alleges that Kevin Schwebke falsely claimed to the Division of Criminal Justice Services that recruits completed in-person training components when he worked for Queeman's Police Department. Good afternoon, Kay Stevenson. Good afternoon, Lin Linda. Oh, damn, I ain't even gonna try the last name. I'm not. Digger Relamo? I don't even know. I tried. I tried. <laughs> Base, what's going on? All right, so the detective, or former detective, he's a lieutenant now, Kevin Schwebke, he used to work for Queeman's Police Department. And he was indicted on felony charges, alleging that he worked for Queeman's Police. He submitted false paperwork to a state agency, claiming that four police recruits had undergone the proper field training. And the video that I'm gonna put out uh, after this live, I spoke to him and he would not give me a direct answer, okay? He kept telling me to go find out from the Division of Criminal Services and stuff like that. Oh, excuse me, Criminal Justice Services. But uh, he wouldn't really give me an, an honest answer, you know, other than that he was not guilty. At the time he was 38 and he's from East Greenbush. He worked as a part-time officer and served as a field training officer in Queemans, which is Queemans, New York. He pled not guilty to the indictment during, appear during his appearance. It says that the article I'm reading, so I apologize if you guys are commenting and I'm not catching the comments, but I'm actually reading this. So the indictment said, in Queemans, Schwebke submitted final evaluation paperwork for two trainees on August 30th, 2018, and two others on January 20th, 2019. And in New York, all municipal police officers are required to complete a basic course for officers within one year of the date of their original appointment. It includes a minimum standard of 700 plus hours of training, which includes field training, officials said. Okay, so he is supposed to ride along with the recruits, okay, for a certain amount of hours. I don't know if it's 170 or something like that, but it was alleged that he did not do that. and I'm gonna get to that right now because I'm literally about to read it. It says, Schwebke was required as a field training officer to physically observe recruits in person to evaluate and document their progress in a daily report. Instead, 
he submitted allegedly false paperwork to the State Division of Criminal Justice Services claiming that the recruits had completed their in-person training components when they had not. Many of the recruits needed to repeat their field training, officials said. So this is the Division of Criminal Justice Services, their bureau, pretty much. This is their, you know, investigation. Plus, I believe there's a probe uh, when it comes to Queeman's Police Department. Not the Menans, but I believe it's the Queeman's Police Department. So the Attorney, uh, Attorney General's office was up their butt at one point. Like I said, I don't know the, uh, the outcome yet. All right, so what else do we got here? At the time, he was still employed here because it, it all started in, in Queeman, Queeman's, New York. And then eventually he came over here because they removed the department, excuse me, division of criminal services. They removed or revoked his recertification or his certification to be able to train police recruits. So they took that away from him. I asked him uh, maybe like 30 minutes ago because he came out. He was the one that actually came out. And I asked him about it. And naturally, he didn't want to say too much other than that he was not guilty. No doubt, major crime, major game, excuse me, major game to gain. Thanks for tuning in, Brandon Mitchell. Thanks for tuning in. A yoke dome. Let's go. But if you're just tuning in, we're in the village of Menans Police Department. We just had uh, practically an interview with the lieutenant or former detective who is now lieutenant. The other article I have here. It says, uh, it was written by Kate Lisa. I think it's a uh, Johnson Newspaper Corporation, if I remember correctly. I believe the first article that I was uh, reading out uh, was from the Times Union. I usually, anytime I do read any articles, I make sure I put them in the description. Most of the time I'll write stuff down for me to remember if I can't remember everything, but sometimes I'll have them in my other phone. But I always put it in the description that way you, you know, you can go and read the article yourself. But uh, there was four officers that had to be retrained. One of them was uh, Officer Michael Case. I'm trying to find all the other names because right now I'm reading the article or I'm about to read the article about the uh, Attorney General uh, probe. It says falsify police records, spark AG probe, Attorney General probe. And this is in Queemans. So not Manaz, but this is Queemans because he used to work. The detective, or former detective, Kevin Schwebke, he used to work for Queemans Police Department. Another person, I believe they resigned, the chief of police for Queemans, his name is Daniel Contento. It said that they both signed an approved document sent to the State Division of Criminal Justice Services attesting that Schwebke personally supervised rookie officers Michael Case, Kelly Arnold, Alexander Hazelton, and Robert Stark III for 496 hours of field training at eight hours shifts each. So eight hour shifts over a combined 52 days in 2018. Oh, looks like we got a rider. He came over. He literally came to my channel to ride the kid. So I'm not even going to say his name, but you know what you could do, right? Don't forget to ride with a helmet, okay? Because I don't think you got a helmet to be riding the kid.
All right, so what else we got here? It said that state investigators have interviewed multiple current and former members of the town police department as part of a larger probe sparked by the improper records. So because of those improper records, it, the attorney generals had to start investigating. And the reason why is because I believe they got an anonymous email. Oh, oh, somebody's here to hate on the kid. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting the cause. Yeah, yeah, they open. And do you know if they have a notary or not? No, I don't think they have a notary here. You probably have to go to the village clerk's office, which is be up the block. How um, far up the block? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going by, I'm going by memory. Okay. okay so, like, because I'm not, I'm not from over here. But uh, I think it's that way, and I don't know. I can't say how far it is, but from what I was looking, it, it shouldn't be too far. Okay. Because I'm probably gonna head over there myself to fill out a FOIA request. Okay. But they should have a notary over there. If okay. not, if not, if you got a bank, uh, uh, you got a bank? Yeah, I was just trying to get it done on my lunch break. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I feel you, man. That's why, so I'll do it later. But thank you. Nah, no problem, man. Have a blessed day. You too. Oh, my man, History Eyewitness is here, no doubt. Now, you can let them hate all they want, History uh, Eyewitness. You you know, if I had a record, I wouldn't be able to be a home health aide, you know what I mean, or even be certified with those kind of things. They don't take kindly to, to people with criminal records, last time I checked. So I don't care if they come here and talk about criminal record and all that other bullshit. They can say what they want. They don't know me, <laughs> you know, so... But hey, you have the power to do what you choose. I put you, I gave you the wrench for a reason, okay? So feel free to utilize it. But, you know, I don't care if they want to come and exercise their uh, free speech in a negative way when it comes to talking trash. It is what it is. As long as they're not being racial, you know, as long as, long as they're not being racist to me and stuff like that. <laughs> UK transparency, you funny. So, article-wise, it said the Division of Criminal Justice Public Integrity Bureau officials within State Attorney General Letitia James's office requested the personnel records of 11 people employed by the Queemans Police Department in 2018. Yeah, trolls add to the algorithm. That's right. So let them, let them come. But Schwebke, who was a detective, is now a lieutenant. He served as the Ravenna... Is it Ravina? I don't know if it's Ravina. I think it's Ravina. Ravina uh, Queeman's Selkirk School Resource Officer from August 2016 through October 2018. In the middle, high school and Peter B. Queeman's elementary buildings. So he would work shifts as the district's SRO. But the state, and this is what I asked him, okay, because he was saying, he was acting out some funny stuff, the lieutenant, Kevin Schwebke. I had, I had asked him if his uh, field training uh, certific certification, if it was revoked, okay, if it was taken from him. And I can't remember if he said yes or no, because I, I, to be honest, I don't think he even answered, okay? He kept giving me a hard time uh, answering my direct questions. He kept referring me to, you know, oh, give me information or get a hold of the Division of, of Criminal Justice Services to get the answers, you know what I mean? Call the people who wrote the article. That's what he kept saying to me. But uh, 
it says the state department, is it? No, I keep saying department, it's division. The state division criminal of criminal justice services stripped Swebke of his state issued field training officer instructor certification to train rookie law enforcement officers in December of 2019. After the department concluded he falsely reported witnessing hours of required field training he did not attend. The department questioned six specific shift dates in June and December of 2018, where Schwebke may have been working as the RCS school resources officer while claiming he supervised training rookie officers on state documents. So I'm continue to scroll through because I'm not going to read everything. Like I said, I'm going to put it in the description. You can feel free. Take it upon yourself to, to, you know, read the whole article or articles. But I'm just trying to take sections of it while we're here because you can already see that they closed uh, the blinds and stuff. Even though they literally have cameras right up above. But... I believe the Division of Criminal Justice Services first notified Contento, who is the chief of police of Queemans Police Department in Queemans, New York. I believe they notified him on December 10, 2020, about the, you know, his training officer certifications, how they were under review. He started as acting police chief in the spring of 2018. He filed, oh my God, see, this is what makes it even worse. He filed his letter of intent to retire December 29th in 2020. That's only 19 days after he was notified by the Division of Criminal Justice Services that his certificate or the uh, training officer certifications were under review. Okay, so he <laughs> filed his letter of intent to retire, okay, 19 days after that. Or fewer than the three weeks after he was notified obviously notified of the state's review into his certifications. Contento, I believe his first name is Daniel, he did not provide a reason for his retirement, effective February 1st, 2021, in the letter submitted to the town administrators. The Division of Criminal Justice Services officially revoked Schwebke's three instructor certifications for general topics field training officer and radar, LIDAR training on December 3rd of 2019 for not complying with field training standards. Okay, so his certifications were revoked. I asked him uh, moments ago, like I said already, I'm gonna put the video out soon, but I did ask him if he was uh, certified here to train the police recruits and he said he is not. So as before, uh, because like I said, I spoke to him moments ago, Schwebke declined to comment on the improper training records that state administrators had uh, or said that he approved in 2018. He said, I don't have any comments at this time. That's what he said when they uh, you know, tried to interview him, when they questioned him. He said, if there's an ongoing investigation, I don't have a comment to make. And this is what I kept telling him, okay? I'm, he says that he was not guilty, right? Even though I haven't found any records uh, online or anywhere, you know what I mean? Saying what he was is saying is true, that it was not, not guilty. But when I asked him uh, the same questions pretty much, he kept saying the same thing. And I'm reminding him that the, if he's not guilty, the investigation's over, right? He said it concluded, okay? So why not talk about it now? You should be more willing to converse with people now. That's just my opinion though. Oh, so there's a little bit of history about Schwebke. 
He's a Catskill native, graduated from Catskill High School in 2002. In 2010, Schwebke, who then worked as a correction officer at Katsaki Correctional Facility, faced a felony charge after illegally collecting $34,000 in workers' compensation benefits. See, I didn't even remember this. After an ankle injury while working part-time as a Cairo Police Department officer. Wow. Wow, so I didn't even know that. Man, I would have asked them about that too. So there you go. In 2010, he used to work as a correction officer at the Katsaki Correctional Facility. And he faced felony charges after illegally collecting the 34,000 in work and compensation benefits. Like, come on now. He was ultimately convicted of disorderly conduct, a violation, and paid the state 3,000 in restitution. Okay, so not only did he falsify, allegedly, okay, I haven't, I don't got no proof of the, of the conclusion of it though, but allegedly falsified documents. So not only, he already has prior history of being a crook. I don't know, something smells fish, fishy to me in Queeman's because I'm not gonna say in Manans, okay? Because he used to work for Queeman's Police Department. But Manans, they do have uh, issues with their hiring practices, okay? They, they hire officers with records. You know what I mean? Whether it's DUI or misdemeanor charges kind of thing. Look at this guy here, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. It says the State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision terminated Schwebke as a correction officer after the case concluded through arbitration. Okay? So they went to an arbitrator, handled everything, and he was terminated. Okay, so they did the right thing. So the allegations, damn, got some haters here, damn. <laughs> some haters here, damn. <laughs> wow. So you can't work and do other things like exercising your rights? I think that's just a little silly, but hey, if that's how some of you think, that's on you. It's that mentality, apparently. But uh, I'm reading the section here, and this has to do with the attorney general's office. It said a year of falsified records. So it was going on for a year. And these are things that they don't really like look into. You have to like, unless it's like specifically requested. Okay, and the only reason why that it, uh, it was requested and they did the investigation is because an anonymous email tip sent to the attorney general's confidential inbox from the Queemans Police Department. Okay, changed that. It was in January of 2019, okay? So somebody sent an email, an anonymous email, to the Attorney General's office, and that's what brought the investigation. It says the person whose identity is sealed by investigators alleged Swebke knowingly reported he supervised field training for Queeman's 2018 police recruits for shifts he was not present. Yeah, that's right. He just gonna hate just like cops are gonna lie. And I'm not gonna say all cops, I'm not. But there is a pattern. Uh, I think they had a hearing. It says, Schwebke admitted during the sep September 4th, 2019 hearing, he signed off on supervised field training hours for shifts he did not personally observe, including completing observation records about recruits' appearance and behavior he did not witness. 
a direct violation of state standards. With his own words, quote, we supervised their field training, but we did not ride with them, no. He said that at a hearing. I did not directly observe them. So he said that at a hearing, okay? Because he is supposed to directly observe them. He's supposed to ride with them in the car, a little ride along. You know, they could, they could, if, if he didn't want to do it, he could have just made it a little more enjoyable. You know, throw a little music on or something, do a little karaoke. <laughs> so he said it out of his own mouth. Okay, I tried to get him to say things, but he wasn't really trying to converse with me like that. And I have to uh, watch the video because I looked at it real quick to see if I picked up the audio. But I believe I did. Yeah, expensive ankle, that's right. Really expensive, 34,000 worth of an injury. So we've been here for, I'll say I spent like seven minutes outside probably, you know, walking around the building maybe, talking to you for a little bit. But I've been here for like 37 minutes already. Uh, they shut down the, the window for the police department, as you can tell. And if you can't, there you go. Now you can tell. So they have a sign there, but I had a conversation with uh, the lieutenant about that sign, okay? And that was before I started filming. So I'm hoping that everything Hey, I don't even care if the, the video quality isn't good. As long as the audio is good, I'm definitely gonna put it out there. Most all cops are criminals, in my opinion. I can agree with that. Because they give us a reason to label them that, as criminals. But I can't say that they're all, you know what I mean, crim criminals. That's why I agree with you when you say most. All right, so back to the story. So records that were sent to the Division of Criminal Justice Services uh, state that Schwebke signed 38 daily reports for Arnold and Case, or 304 hours of supervised eight-hour shifts for over a 25-day period between June 8th and July 4th, 2018. Schwebke also claimed to be the supervising field training officer for 24 eight-hour shifts in the 27-day period from December 5th through December 31st, 2018 for Stark and Hazleton. Okay, so those are uh, the hours he supposedly did with all four officers or recruits. So there's an associate training technician named David Mahaney who works for the Division of Criminal Justice Services. And, his, and this is what he has stated. Quote, in my opinion, it seemed excessive and wanted me to cause me to look into, further, into it further, excuse me. Because he was a witness for the department during the 2019 hearing. It also says that he attested to separately supervising officer case for 20 shifts or 120, or excuse me, 160 hours. Arnold for 18 shifts or 144 hours. Hazleton for 10 shifts or 80 hours. And recruit Stark for 14 shifts or 112 hours. So that's what he attested to, I'm assuming, uh, at the hearing. Schwebke maintained innocence throughout his Division of Criminal Justice Service hearing, saying he completed the training and signed the corresponding reports as the department's training supervisor at the, <laughs> at the behest of then acting Chief Contento. And I laughed because Contento was the one who resigned. 
or retired, excuse me. So it sounds like that he was just pointing the finger. like, hey, my boss was the one who signed off on it. I only did what I was told. That's pretty much what I'm, you know, what I get out of that when I read it. All right, so I'm looking for, I'm looking through the article. And when I'm done with the article, I'm probably gonna dip out because we've been here long enough. Been here for like 41 minutes. I'll probably go back out, give you, you know, another angle of the building. But other than that, she had an issue, but I can only assume that she went to the back, told them what I was doing. And these officers know better, with all due respect, they know better than to come out here when someone's just exercising their rights lawfully in the lobby, the public lobby of the police department. I'm not in any of the court areas, court hallways or anything like that. So that's why nobody's come out or nobody has came out technically is how I should reword that. All right, back to the story. I'm trying to find out what else I need to read. I guess it says here that Schwebke told the Division of Criminal Justice Services officials he did not have control over the schedule and signed off on the training records per the chief's orders, just like I said. Let me read the comments real quick. <laughs> I'm reading your comment, Who's Now Ninja, you crazy? Very true, I, I can agree with that. Sometimes they're, you know, you think they're a good cop, and if they're sitting there watching uh, citizens be violated and stuff, and they don't do anything about it, does that are they still good? So I, I get it. Reading your comments now. Yep, no one's showing up for services. That's right. You saw the guy. I had to talk to the guy myself. He asked me if they had a notary here and stuff. It's literally just in the back. All right, I don't think I see anything else here. There is a section that says certifications dismantled, but I'm not sure if I'd even need to uh, read any of that. But uh, the four officers that he trained, or supposedly trained, they had to be retrained. I think the only sanction was against Officer Swebke. Other than that, I don't think anybody else was uh, disciplined in regards to this, to the allegations, or at least these allegations. It says the Queemans Town Board refused to reappoint Swebke to the Queemans, Queemans, excuse me, Queemans Police Department at the end of 2020 over a lack of work shifts according to the town documents. I did ask him a question about that because I thought I remember something about reappoint. And he said something about, I'm a police officer kind of thing. So they don't reappoint police officers, but I, I pretty much <laughs> that's what I'm reading here. But hey, 
It says uh, Schwebke moved over to Minans, the Minans Police Department, where he has worked part-time since 2018, and was promoted to full-time detective last June. So this article came out in 22. He is one of several officers with a history of criminal charges or misconduct or involvement and in turmoil within the Queemans Department to land at the village agency. So they came from Queemans, New York, several officers, okay, who have history, criminal history, or criminal charges or misconduct. They came over here to Menans, okay? One of them being a former detective who's now Lieutenant Kevin Schwebke. Crazy. The Sergeant Daniel Braden, I believe. Was he one of the people? I don't recall that name. To be honest. But they are mentioning a Daniel Braden and that he previously worked at the agency part-time since 2018. Said Braden resigned from the Green County Sheriff's Office and was dismissed by Cairo police after pleading guilty to official misconduct by a public servant, a class A misdemeanor in 2016. Damn, see what I'm saying? They, this is the kind of people that they're hiring. And this is what, what happened, I believe. And it's in quotes, I believe. Uh, State police investigator Don Bailey is the one who I'm about to quote. While in his official Green County Sheriff's Office uniform, he possessed and uttered an altered police report to the CVS pharmacy in an attempt to receive a prescription for oxycodone, according to the complaint signed by State Police Investigator Don Bailey. Okay, so this guy was trying to get oxycodone and stuff from the CVS pharmacy. He also worked, oh, okay, that's why they mentioned him, because he worked as the RCS school resource officer for a portion of the 2018-2019 academic year. And I think he also worked with this guy, Detective, uh, or, or excuse me, Lieutenant Kevin Schwebke, if I remember correctly. But uh, Braden was removed after a public outcry about his past drug-related conviction. So I think that's why he came over here. So we've been here for 49 minutes, close to an, getting close to an hour. Uh, I read most of the article, the parts that I believe are important, the most important parts, which is the several officers coming over here from uh, Queemans Police Department, officers with criminal misconduct records. It looks like this is the place to go if you're a cop. And if you know if you do wrong, you get in trouble for it. You just come over here, and they'll hire you. I believe the Albany County Sheriff's uh, got involved when it comes to like patrolling. I believe it's Queemans, if I remember correctly. I'm not reading that. I'm just trying to remember. Because I believe once that happened, that's when, you know, some issues kind of started to happen there. But I do have something from the sheriff, the Albany County Sheriff, uh, Greg Apple, or Craig. 
It's probably Craig, yeah, excuse me. Craig Apple, a Queemans native. He said that proper police training continues to be an issue for smaller departments. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to, uh, I'm going to put the video out uh, shortly, but I do. I wanted to go live. That way I can show you what I was doing, give you a heads up, because I like to do that. I like to go live and, and talk about um, what video I'm about to put out before I actually show you guys. Damn, it's expensive ankle, huh? Woof. He then worked as a correctional officer. I got his number, so I think I'm going to give him a call and see if we can talk more about uh, <laughs> more about the workers' comp benefits there. All right. So I think we have done our job. We are done. adjust my tripod for a second all right but yeah that's pretty much it guys and gals she's still working but she's got the blind and stuff so because i could hear her clicking away reading some of this that they have there. Look at this, look at this, guys. History, right there. Young, youngins don't even know about that. Well, yeah, this is pretty much it. So if you want some assistance. Yeah, Stark and Case work here. No doubt. Appreciate the heads up on that. So here you can see for yourself. So you can see, they got it posted up outside. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. Yeah, she's still working, of course. Of course she's still working. All right, so there you go, ladies and gents. Okay. There's the sign, they have it all around everywhere I'll show you guys if you want to see this you're gonna have to uh rewind the video even though i just showed you technically i don't even think i showed it the same signs oh you want me to see if the phone works It works. The guy came in and, and, uh, and went earlier in the live. And I'm pretty sure he touched the button. It works. But that's it. Let's go check out the car real quick. Lieutenant Kevin Schwebke. Schwebke. I always have a hard time saying that. I had to look that shit up. <laughs> but you can see. They only got like one vehicle out here. And the clerk's office is up the block. Oh, damn. Looks sick. Look at that. Woo. Riding in style, yo. I wonder who pulled up in this. He cruising. Yeah, that's pretty much it. One police vehicle. At least right here. I'm pretty sure I... I don't know if I'm seeing stuff, but I thought I see, seen a... Or I thought I saw, technically, I should say, a black 
police vehicle over here. I don't know if that's Water Valley. You can hear uh, the heat. You can hear the sounds coming from the car. I wonder who uh, pulled up. All right, but that's it. That is it. I just wanted to see what was good. With the sign, they respected. All right. Well, at least one person. One person uh, said we couldn't record and closed the blind in our face, which I thought was interesting. But other than that, they didn't come out and remove us unlawfully. Uh, here's some flags so you can check them out. I didn't even notice them at first. It's so sunny out here. It's so sunny. I think I might, uh, let me see something. It's 129. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm gonna wrap it up right here. If I come across anything else, I'll, uh, I'll stream it. If not, I record it for sure. That I'll definitely do. If I don't do a live stream, I'll definitely film it. But uh, that's pretty much it. It's, you know, it's not too big. I really don't know. Uh, I think the village court would be, it said second floor, if I remember correctly. So maybe the whole second floor is the village court, court excuse me, section. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I've never, I've never been here before, so I can't really say. And this is the fire department. Somebody mentioned that it's small. It definitely is small. But they have something, you know what I mean? To fight fire, so that's, that's what matters. But that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for chilling with the kid. You guys been chilling with me for at least an hour. Uh, I figured, uh, I didn't really know what I was gonna capture. So I figured I at least uh, tell you the story about former detective who is now a lieutenant. So he went from one place and now he's over here. He says that he's not guilty and that's what the outcome was. But I haven't found anything that, that says what he's telling me. And every time I would ask him questions and remind him that the allegations or the, the case itself, investigation, has concluded, he still doesn't want to give me direct answers. But what do you expect, right? But that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna be walking by the Palace Theater. I don't know if I'm gonna get some shots of that. I already took some pictures for myself because I, you know, I like the way it looks. I usually take pictures of things for me. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for chilling with the kid. Take care of one another. And like always, take care of yourself. See you guys soon.